Last week, we couldn't agree if the elk in the great hall at Longleat House had horns or antlers. Look at the horns on that. That hasn't got horns here, it's got antlers. Horns. Antlers. Horns. So antlers. this week, we're going to find out what the difference is. I'll be finding out about horns. And I'll be finding out about antlers in this week's edition of Junior Rangers. There are a lot of animals at Longleat that have horns and antlers. Out in the safari park, keep a good lookout for the eland and the bongo. And you can feed the deer. And don't forget to visit the goats who live up by the trading post. To help me find out about horns, I've met up with Ian in the East African Game Reserve. So Ian, why do animals have horns? Well, there's a few different reasons, but the main reason is usually for fighting and defending themselves against each other. You know, you get two males together, they can battle away and uh, who's their dominant. So that's the main reason. With the scimitar and oryx, for instance, they use them for scratching because they've got sweeping back horns, which goes right over the back, and they can use them when they've got an itch. <laughs> so there's a different reasons for it, but mainly it's for, it's for fighting. Yeah, one of the largest horns in the world is the... Uh, Asiatic water buffalo, which we've got in our monkey jungle, and they're absolutely ginormous. World's biggest horns. Wow! The water buffalo's horns can grow up to four metres across, but that doesn't seem to worry the monkeys. Now, the monkeys may not be worried, but I am, because we've come down to the vulture enclosure. Now, now, Joe, I've brought you into the vulture enclosure, look, because this is where we've actually got a horn. And this is from the Ancoli cattle, this is. And literally, there's bone all the way up to here. And this is just like your fingernail, this is. See that? And this will continually grow throughout their life, so it'll get bigger and bigger all the time. And they're very proud of their horns. Yeah, the bigger they are, the stronger. It's usually the males who've got the biggest horns. All different shapes and sizes. And this is just an outer covering on the top of the horn. And that's solid bone under there. And literally, if this breaks off, this won't grow again. So you can see they've got to carry this round. And that's quite a big weight. You feel how heavy that is? And they've got to carry that round, which is why they've got big neck muscles. Well, if you're born with that, you'd be used to it, but I wouldn't be able to carry that around. No. Well, while Joe's in the vulture enclosure, I've met up with Tim and we are going to have a look at the deer. But is there an easy way to tell the difference between horns and antlers? Well, Annie, there's a, a real difference between uh, horns and antlers. Uh, horns are for life and antlers are shed every year and fall off. As we can see, there are lots of bucks there, fallow bucks, and they're growing their new sets of antlers. And they're, they're in velvet. Um, and this is the, the, the time uh, when they r completely regrow a new set of, of antlers. They've got this uh, velvety skin that, that covers the antlers and, and the antler grows within. Why do deer have antlers? The majority of, of the deer species only the males have antlers. The, the antler is, a, is a, a symbol. I mean, not only does it, it look um, impressive, it, it's a fighting tool. It means that a male can fight with another male and keep him away so that, uh, that he can uh, um, have as many of, uh, of the females come to him rather than the others. And, uh, and of course, it does get uh, damaged in, when they're fighting. It, 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 parts of it break off so it's rather fitting that every year they cast an antler and, and a new one is grown. Well Annie here we have two examples here of fallow deer antlers the uh, the pal palmated antlers that fallow have. So these antlers that you can feel are really quite light aren't they? The, this is very very similar to bone. What's the 
funny, bumpy white stuff. That, that's that's very interesting because that that's actually where the antler was attached to what is known as the the pedicle on the deer, a bony uh, platform that grows from the skull, and that was attached there. How long are they without their antlers? Their antlers fall off towards the end of April, and then immediately the antler starts to grow again. And by the end of August, which is a four month sort of period, it's fully grown again. Is it painful when the antler falls off? It's like the autumn when the leaves drop off, the antler falls off onto the ground. If you'd like to find out more about horns and antlers, you can download this week's activity sheet. Just click on the green download button. So, now we know the difference between horns and antlers. Horns are permanently fixed to the skull. They are made of bone on the inside and have keratin, which is the same material as our fingernails, on the outside. Horns are never shed and continue to grow throughout the animal's life. And if they do break, they will not regrow. Antlers are shed and regrow each year. Antlers usually have a branch shape and they're made of just bone and they're generally only found on males. So, does the elk in the Great Hall have horns or antlers? Antlers. No. But these antlers are also the oldest thing at Longleat, dating back to the prehistoric times. But what's the oldest living thing at Longleat? Come and join us next week and we'll find out.